Yo, what's happening guys? My name is Killian, the shop's videographer. This week, we're celebrating the 100th episode of the Fly on the Wall web series, Shop Life. I'll be sitting down with shop's owner, Lee, and operations manager, Andrew, to really find out what goes on behind the scenes. Shop Life kind of organically was made, like it, it it wasn't really a plan. It wasn't really um, a concept or a pitch. We just, I, originally when I started the shop, I thought content was, was real key. And we're like, we need someone to record this stuff. Like if someone could be a fly on the wall for one day, like they, like we need people to see this. We, we would just find funny clips that happened, so we didn't want to let those get lost. And we're like, I just post it up, post it up. And then it became like, maybe we should just make a compiled thing of a bunch of clips. And then it was like, well, the clips were so common and so frequent that it was like a compiled thing weekly. And then uh, we got into it and just gave a title to it. And it's true, it is shop life, because you really don't know what you're gonna get when you're here. The stuff we see at the store on a daily basis is fucking nuts. Like people just think oh, it was a tattoo shop, but you know, I'd say <laughs> I'd say it's a lifestyle. But if you're basing it on a shop life, it's a real messed up lifestyle. The culture at FY Inc. is is unique. You've got all these people from different walks of life, but like everyone is driven by success. Everybody wants to be the best version of themselves. I think that. When I speak to a lot of the guests, they all say one thing, and that's, it's not like a tattoo shop. It's a, it's a party in here, you know? Like, it's not only a work environment, like everyone just loves to genuinely have a good time. And when everyone's having a good time, it's not even fucking work anymore. It's very family orientated. It's like, as much as it's, there's amazing art that comes out of here. I'll never take that away from the artist. But there's, there's a sense of um, like freedom here. Almost like, um, like, it's almost like the freedom allows them to produce good art because we're, we're so, careless is the wrong word, but like um, maybe reckless, uh, professionally reckless, I'd say. <laughs> you know, 11 p.m. hits, flip the lights off, turn up, put up a DJ set and just start, you know, throwing down and, and we all just start having drinks. Like, what other fucking shop does that? <laughs> Like, no one, no one does this shit. Yeah, I, I think that um, a lot of people probably think it's staged. A lot of people probably believe that um, those characters are putting it on a lot. Of, like, we put them up to things. Um, but the truth of the matter is, those are characters, and they're, they're probably in every city. The only difference is we take our time to listen to them. <laughs> Most people would be quick to be like, fuck out of here. Like, I don't have time for this shit. But... For us, it's almost like we embrace how fucked up the situation is, you know? And it's like, yeah, tell me more, honey, you know? And he's like, yeah, you gotta change. And she's going on about how she used to be a stripper. And like, this, this is some like fucking like 80 year old lady. You know what I mean? The best part is you speak to those people, they probably got more culture and more history and more in their lives than most of society. So it's, it's, uh, it's something you can only experience in person. <laughs> I think some secrets are just supposed to stay on the bench, but <laughs> but that bench has been around many years and it's seen many asses. <laughs> It'll tell you that like this this place is like nothing else. Like that bench, if you put that bench anywhere else in the world, it it couldn't tell you what shop life is telling you. You know, I always like looking back because there's so many different generations through this shop, whether that be clients, whether it's the staff, or hey, even some of my friends. Some of my friends I haven't spoken to in many years. Some of the guest stars I haven't spoken to in many years. And you look up on the TV or you look on Instagram and you see it. I don't know, man. There's some pretty cool ones. Like when the Raptors won, that was a pretty, pretty dope episode. It's pretty sick. Some of the best moments of my life were captured in that. And I forget those moments exist. And I think that's the value in shop life. It's just a constant reminder of how good life has been.
being taken away from the shop definitely like it, it affected me in, in a way that I, I never thought like you know it's it's not just a job it's literally a lifestyle being here I think the biggest struggles in here were um, the divide between society how did I overcome that like almost it wasn't really depression it was definitely like an emptiness you know you just got to keep busy I'm definitely happy it's in the rearview mirror in my eyes I think it is I think we've done enough to, to believe that it's something we can live with now um, there were there were some rocky moments with the shop um, I had to sell some assets to be able to keep this place alive but hey I'd sell my soul to keep this place alive <laughs> I think that's a start. <laughs> Let's put it this way, I got the lease extended because of that stomach. <laughs> the, the new landlord was like, what? Why did you tattoo that? I see it a little more kind of like this. When you came to me with this idea of like, hey, for the 100th episode, can we do like an interview? Like, I think stuff like this is, is cool. Like, there's so much content being created that I do believe sometimes it's hard to get good content in front of the right eyes. So um, I think maybe finding a platform for shop life, not just Instagram, not just YouTube, finding a proper platform where they respect what's going on here so the world can see what we're doing. I think now it's time to really start kind of revealing the, the deeper parts of the characters that are involved in this studio. Like guest artists kind of wanting to be a little bit more involved now that they have like cameos in it and stuff like that. I would, I would want to see like, you know, the, the real side of them that people don't see, you know, on camera. But then again, I don't know, I might be fucking wrong. People might just love fucking crate challenges and watching people hurt themselves. <laughs> I don't know, you, you guys tell me, what do you want to see? You want to see more jackass shit or do you want to see more in-depth stuff like this? Good job, man. Yeah, awesome. That's actually really good, man. Awesome. Really good. Thank you very much again. Yeah, no problem. The great thing about the management staff here and Lee as the owner is he gives me full creative control, which is amazing. It's not like any of the other jobs I've had. They trust my vision. They know that I'm going to show the artist in the best light and also, at the end of the day, create like a really fun, engaging video. To be honest, I'm just trying to create a piece of content that's easily digestible, fun, and just kind of encapsulates the overall culture of the shop on a week-to-week -week basis. It's honestly like a box of chocolates. I know it sounds cliche, but you never know what the fuck you're gonna get. Thanks again for watching, guys. Honestly, I really do appreciate everyone liking, and comment, and watching the videos every week. It does really mean a lot to us. And hope you stay tuned in the future as there's big things coming in the summer.